Predictable formulaic, all spectacle with no actual substance. This is the reality of the post-endgame Marvel Cinematic Universe, and nothing makes this more clear than watching The Boys, a morally complex drama with realistic characters and its biting satire are killing the MCU. When it was released in 2019, Boys reinvented the superhero genre by asking one simple question. What would a world with superpowers really look like? Well, it's not a pretty picture. The heroes are steeped in corruption, threatening, abusing, or murdering whoever they want. Meanwhile, their crimes are covered covered up and hidden by the mega corporation Vault, which uses money and power to stay in control. The main characters are a group of outcasts, whose lives were torn apart by the system they're desperately trying to fight. The show makes it clear that it's a satire of modern superheroes across the board. The main villain Homelander is a clear example, a warped and twisted analogue of Superman, who takes glee in violence and cruelty. But just like everything in The Boys, he's not black and white. Homelander isn't just another evil Superman, like the character from Injustice. He's been traumatised, raised in a lab, and isolated from anything that even even looks like a real family. He's desperate for love and attention, while seeing everyone as either beneath them or not worth anything at all. And he's not just violent to achieve his goals, he's violent because he's got a hair trigger temper and the emotional maturity of a teenager. In short, he's a deep and intricate character, and just one of the many examples for why The Boys is destroying the MCU. The past few years haven't been kind to Disney's money printing machine, with just a few exceptions like the Spider-Man sequels, the Marvel films released after Endgame have been commercial and creative disasters. Poor writing has plagued them all, with focus group characters acting out formulaic plotlines which lack any real tension, and The Boys has shown audiences just how compelling the genre can be. Alongside other shows like Invincible, it pushed the genre forward, and most importantly, it matured with its audience. And for all the people who have been following Marvel films for over a decade, it's like a breath of fresh air. The Boys took the best parts of the MCU that people loved and made it even better. It took the parts that people don't like and made fun of them. The Boys excel at poking fun of the world we live in though, not just Marvel films, its commentary on them flows naturally as a result of what it says about our society. The end game scene was just pandering and laughably obvious. It's presented as if it's something revolutionary, like they're proving something about how strong women really are. The scene was made fun of around the world, and the boys didn't pull any punches. But before we continue, I want to talk about a video sponsor. Have you ever googled yourself and were shocked to see your personal information exposed in one of those public listing sites? Data brokers are making a fortune selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and others who want to learn more about you, like where you live. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Now, brokers are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to, but if they make it super hard to do, let Aura handle it for you. And you can try Aura for free for two weeks using my link. Aura also does so much to protect you and your family from online threats you can't see. It's super easy to set up and you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance and more. Instead you get everything in one at an affordable price. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so that you can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. You can either let people continue to exploit and profit off your private information or you can go to Aura.com for forward slash moon to start your two week free trial. We'll also link down in the description below. They didn't even need to change the scene at all to parody it, it's ridiculous enough on its own. The best satire and parody though doesn't just work as a collection of jokes, you still need the substance. And the boys did this and more, giving us an actually satisfying and hilarious girl power scene without a single ounce of cringe. Instead of the orchestral swell and the generic bad guys to crush, it's a real fight against a powerful villain with fitting music. It actually has meaning for the plot, it's pretty much better in every way. The difference is all in the meanings behind the scenes. Endgame's scenes fell flat because it was completely hollow. Corporations don't care about girl power at all, they're just using it to appeal to different groups of people. Disney put that scene in to do exactly that, it's the same reason they're ruining Snow White. The hypocrisy is what really defines it, and The Boys does a great job of showing this. Just like real companies, Valt makes every effort to look as politically conscious and inclusive as possible. It's all for the image of course, a cover for the awful abuses of power that go on behind the scenes. The show even goes into how a politically correct environment doesn't actually help anyone and it can actively be used against people. Mivi, a bisexual superheroine on the show, has her identity used against her when Homelander forces her to come out on live TV. And we have a gay hero, Queen Maeve. Mm-hmm. Scoop for you, Maria. Companies use their political preaching to get away with things all the time. It's a part of what the boys is satirizing. Disney makes grand overtures. 
about gay rights, all while censoring and selling their films to Russia and the Middle East, censoring any gay scenes possible, and as they used the Rainforest Alliance to quietly sweep under the rug their breaking of all their connections with fair trade. The boys' point here is that powerful people and organizations, which have no sympathy for the lives they ruin, will latch onto any hot issue to distract you from their own crimes. We won't need a day to prove we're just as fast or strong or skilled. The symbolism runs throughout the show. Homelander and the other superheroes are literally representations of the power that some people have. The deaths and suffering they cause is far greater than anything Homelander ever did on the show. But just like the famous quote says, at some point you cross the line from personal tragedies into statistics. Butcher's speech to Huey towards the beginning of the show lays it all out. People don't cause a fuss because they don't want to listen. Abuses of power happen. People die for corporations as bottom lines all the time. But as Butcher says, it's a collateral damage. It's part of the plan and the world moves on without noticing. The boy systematically picks this essential lie apart. We see the violence and it affects us because it's direct. Homelander does it himself, rather than signing some document which eventually leads to people losing their lives. With just a few degrees of separation, it all gets easier to ignore. It's not the only way that the boys is far more connected to the world we live in. It actually creates a compelling and uncertain narrative. Which is most visible in the overall story. You know who's going to come out on top in a Marvel film. The heroes always win. The movie begins, they plow up one character flaw that often isn't really even a flaw, then the villain turns up, gets the conflict going, and the heroes overcome their trials and finally emerge victorious. It's a formula that they have used over and over again, making it the junk food of cinema. But for many, this is satisfying enough. Infinity War was so successful because it reinvented this formula. They made Thanos the hero of his own story, and he actually won in the end. The amount of discussion online and the fever around the movie was insane, but it was a one-time thing and since then, Marvel's villains and their plotlines have retreated back into their predictable formula. Whereas The Boys is so effective because you have no idea what's actually going to happen in an episode. The Boys don't always win, in fact they normally lose. They don't have superpowers or billions of dollars like their adversaries. The odds are always firmly against them, but they fight anyway, which makes them far more heroic than any other overpowered Marvel hero. The plot doesn't play out to hit the specific notes of the superhero movie. The characters made their own decisions, motivated by their own desires, entirely highly grounded within the context of the world. These narrative decisions make the show chaotic and completely unpredictable, which is just one of the ways that the boys are so much closer to reality while still being completely off of the wall. The sense of having no idea what's going to happen next is also the main reason why Homelander is such an effective and terrifying villain. When he's on screen, you've got every reason to be afraid. He can switch from smiling to the cameras to murderous rage in an instant. He treats violence like nothing, lacking any empathy for his victims. In one scene, he takes the hearing away from a blind superhero hero, dooming him to a life trapped in his own head. He does it just to prove a point and because he finds it insulting that someone with a disability could be compared to him. Now plenty of villains are violent at the drop of a hat, but with Homelander there's absolutely no way to predict it. It helps that Anthony Starr's performance is one of the best we've seen in decades. When we see him performing for the cameras, Anthony nails Homelander's wide smile combined with his completely dead eyes. <laughs> His mastery of his expressions as a whole is really what seals the deal. The scene where Homelander talks to his alter ego in a mirror is a masterclass. He goes through the whole range, showcasing fear, anger, guilt, and hatred, all in the space of a single minute. And then, well then my boy, you can finally be who you were always meant to be. It's this iconic performance that's thrust Homelander into the public consciousness. You can't go five minutes online without seeing his face used in a meme or as a reaction. It serves to make Homelander that much more terrifying as the lives of the people around him completely depend on the unstable emotions that Anthony Starr portrays so well. When he's violent, it's often without any warning or build up. At the end of the day though, any villain that can make the word yummers intimidating is something special. Yeah. Yummers. Guess you wanted to cram in as much fat fuck as possible, huh? At the beginning, the performances were what made the MCU into the juggernaut we know today. Without Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr., the whole franchise would have had a hard time getting off of the ground. They're what catapulted it towards success, but most of the big names now have left. Their stories have finished, and they probably won't be back. Remaining stars like Benedict Cumberbatch and Chris Hemsworth have found themselves shackled by poor scripts and loose motivations. The Boys has the advantage of multiple seasons and episodes to develop these characters, but this is even considering that the villains in the MCU never even came close to what they've achieved. Most of the time, they're everything Homelander isn't. Their motivations rarely make sense outside of moving the plot forward. Their plans are predictable and often stupid, nearly always devolving into a big fight scene. A lot of the time, they're simply just weaker than the hero in every way, and it means there's even less stakes, especially because we know they'll lose in the end. 
The unsubtle and one-dimensional writing in the MCU mirrors what political commentary they do stuff in. Disney's attempts just pile more ammunition into the culture war, little 10 second clips to show they're taking a side, a battle that can never be won because it's defined by its division. Issues then get absorbed by the war, turn into simplified yes or no questions and then they get pitted against each other. And the boy satirizes this through its treatment of the fans. They're clearly allegorical for modern political fanatics in today's societies. Homelander's fans are Trump supporters, Starlight's the Democrats, and like good satire, it pokes phone up both sides of the fence. But its greater point is that the whole thing is a farce to begin with. The boys reduces the modern culture war down to what it really is, toxic fandoms. The people on either side aren't actually thinking about the issues, they're just rooting for their team. Both valid and powerful institutions in real life take advantage of this and promote it as much as they can. And if half the country is constantly at war with the other half, then it lets them keep everything exactly the same. It's another way they divert and redirect people's anger. Which is why it makes so much sense for the superheroes to stand in for the politicians. It's just like the politicians, they're ludicrously powerful, but they have to make hollow speeches and they get paraded around for their cameras. The real power is in the money in the corporations or vault in the show. It's ironic that the show that's done the most to make this visible to people is completely owned and operated by Amazon, the picture child for monolithic medical corporations. The show never actually calls out or satirizes Amazon itself, although that doesn't mean it's just hypocrisy. Amazon probably didn't think it was going to be such a hit to begin with, and now that it's this popular, they can't interfere with it. There's unfortunately no other way the show could be made without some big money flowing in. It would be nice to imagine that Eric Kripke, the showrunner, got one over on Amazon by getting them to fund something which indirectly criticizes them, but the reality is probably less satisfying. The Boys is blowing away Marvel's idea of humor as well. Speaking of which, I haven't seen Translucent around anywhere. You would wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Cunt's invisible. It could be standing in that fucking corner, plugging one out right now for all we know. Instead of witty quips which take you out of the moment, The Boys keeps it to a minimum, mostly playing it deadpan. It's the situations that are funny, the characters themselves create the laughs. It's the kind of humour that adds to the story rather than making it feel like the characters are just taking it all as a joke. But if there's one thing Marvel's always been able to rely on, it's their ability to make a spectacle. It doesn't really matter if the plot and the dialogue suck, as long as the CGI is on point, that's half the battle for Marvel films. Which is why people like Martin Scorsese describe this as the junk food of cinema. Recently though, even the special effects have been slipping, like the floating head from Thor. The effects just don't have the same impact anymore. With absolutely everything being green screened in, it's really hard for any of it to seem like it's actually there. And of course, the boys' as Marvel be here. The practical effects are what makes it. By combining the same high level of special effects that Marvel has, the actual prosthetics and props underneath makes it much more believable. If you want spectacle, the boys has it in spades. Of course it's not competing for the cinematic experience, but it doesn't really need to. The boys has taken advantage of the shift in the audience. The MCU has been going on for 15 years. Lots of people who grew up with it are past adulthood. They're not looking for what the MCU has been doing for all that time. I would make the argument they made Thor a dumbass. I just don't think it does the character justice. It's a very see the joke, take the joke, regardless of what it does to the characters kind of mentality. They're looking for something to fill the gap, and shows like The Boys and Invincible have just done that. They actually grew with their audience. The MCU has done the opposite. The most recent Thor film in the upcoming Avengers film shows they're doubling down on keeping the kids happy, and in the process, they're alienating the people who have kept the franchise going for so long. Whereas The Boys has already preempted this with their commentary on child stars, and we can assume Ryan will play a big part in the next season. Their new spin-off is already going in that direction. Marvel is going to keep giving them plenty of material, not that they were lacking. And if you take a look at Marvel's recent movies, it's clear they're losing their momentum. Other than Spider-Man, which has its own unique appeal, they haven't had any films hit the $1 billion mark since Endgame. Lots of them like Shang-Chi, Eternals or the most recent Ant-Man haven't even got close to breaking even. Generic Marvel just doesn't do it anymore. The audience is tired of it. They've moved on and the boys was happy to pick up the slack. And by giving people better writing, actual tension and pushing the genre forward, the boys is now killing Marvel.